In this following tutorial, we are going to cover scale, dimension, and how to keep your map to proportion in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Keeping your map to scale is a very important aspect of creating your map. If one aspect of your environment is off, then it will down spiral to the rest of your world and it could set your scale of props of the way you have walls and stairs and doorways to be a little bigger or smaller which will ruin the illusion of the world. To do that you need to know player height, player width, what is the average wall height and many other architectural element dimensions in units. So in this tutorial we're going to cover player height and width, what is the minimum height you need for a wall uh, when the player is standing, when the player is crouching, as well as many other architectural elements that you need to know in order to create a world that seems to be built to proper scale and looks real. So to get things started, let's cover player dimensions first and then we'll move on to architecture. So the first thing that you need to know is the player height while standing and player height while crouching. So the player height is set at 72 units while standing and the player height while crouching is set at 54 units. The width of character either standing or crouching is 32 units. So what does that mean in terms of units inside Hammer? So here in the bottom you will see that we have grid setting set to 1. We want to bump this up to a little higher to about 16. And let's go to orthographic viewport. Now in order for us to understand the 72 units in height, all we need to do is simply left click and begin to draw a measuring box inside the orthographic viewport. Here we can see that the units in dimension is set to 32 by 80. So let's bump it down to grid size set to 16, down to 8. And let's bring it back down. So here we have a box that's 72 in height and 32 in width. This is the bounding box of a character in Source. You also want to make sure that you are snapped on to grid. And if you're not sure, if you go up to map and make sure that the snapped on to grid is, is set to check. And the grid setting you can change by using the bracket keys. If we draw this out in the standing character, you will notice that if you try to be accurate, the actual model is 75 units in height. Now, this is just the visual element of the character in Counter Strike Global Offensive. The bounding box of the actual character is at 72 units in height. So, we want to pay attention to the bounding box because that will restrict the player when they try to go underneath a wall that's lower than 72 which will restrict them and won't allow them to go under it while standing they will have to crouch so 72 and 54 in character height while standing and crouching are the first two dimensions that are important when you're creating your map next we need to know what is the minimum height of a wall while the player is standing or crouching what is the minimum that you can have the wall height uh, for the player to be able to pass through underneath without getting snagged or stopped. And uh, for a standing character, the minimum height of a wall standing needs to be 73 units. For a crouching character, minimum height has to be 55 units. So all you do is just simply add one unit up from player height standing and crouching. For minimum width to pass through between walls has to be 33 units, either standing or crouching. Next is the player jumping height. First I have a box. This is a box in units uh, that where a player can jump on top of the box without crouching. The second box is set for where a player needs to crouch and jump. Maximum height jump without crouch has to be set at 54 units. Anything higher than that and the player needs to jump crouch. For maximum height jump with crouch and jump. The height has to be no more than 64 units. 54 and 64 are good numbers to remember because they're uh, very similar to each other. I would keep these units to either lower or uh, at maximum 54 and 64. 
Um, I did test 65 and 66 for jump crouch and I was able to get it to work where a player can jump crouch on top of those boxes but uh, um, I would keep them at 54 and 64 max. Uh, just two easy values to remember. Next is the maximum height of an object that a player is able to walk over without jumping. So here I have two blocks. One is set at 18 units and the other one is at 19. The one that's set at 18, the player can simply just walk over without jumping and keep on moving. The one that's set at 19, it just stops the player dead on so they have to jump over it. So maximum object height without jumping for player has to be set at no more than 18 units. Next is the stair height and depth. For a more accurate and realistic stairs, each stair has to be a certain height and depth uh, for a player to walk up and uh, where it feels natural and doesn't feel out of proportion. So here I have uh, stairs that feel very realistic. Uh, and here is an, an example of stairs that achieve the same height, but they're weirdly unproportional. So for a uh, more natural realistic height for stairs, stair depth has to be 16 units and stair height is at 8 units. So if we select this and let me go into orthographic viewport and let's bump up the grid so it's not on 1 but it's a little higher right at 8. You can see that each individual stair is at 16 by 8 and it's just duplicated and repeated over until it reaches the height of a wall. Uh, for second floor which is at 128 units and I'll cover that in just a second. Uh, so here is the second stairs and these are set at 16 by 16 and they just seem very steep and they just seem way too big. For wall height the average wall height is at 128 units. This seems the most natural for usual hallways office type buildings, apartments, uh, this will give you a good scale to go off of if your walls are at 128 and you can see that these are the developer textures that give you an idea uh, uh, so you can keep your map to scale by giving you the 72 player height template as well as the wall template. Now uh, the height wall will differ bit, uh, based on your environment so this is a good average to uh, go off of or like a standard that you set to uh, but uh, this will depend on the type of environment you're creating so I uh, use these units as a base to start from uh, but then experiment and find your own based on your environment. The depth of each wall uh, is usually 16 units. You can experiment with uh, setting it to 8 uh, but this seems uh, a lot of times too small. For interior walls, uh, this can be pulled off. Let's say you're creating an office and uh, in between two rooms, eight should be enough. Uh, but for majority of the walls, I tend to set it to 16. Next, we have door height and width. This is more of flexible uh, unit dimension because uh, this will all depend on the type of door that you're using. The template that is given to you, uh, the door height is 56 by 112. And that's the frame. And it shows you the inside of the frame is 48 by 108. Now, this is a good template to go off of and begin when you're blackening in your environment. Uh, but when you begin to insert doors, and these are prop door rotating, uh, when the player comes up, they're able to open them and close them these doors are all different scale so the doors have a flexible approach to where you have to change the BSP geometry around it to confine and close out these areas so if we go into orthographic viewport we can see that all these doors have different scale to them now for some of these walls you will still need to put a border a door frame around them to make it more realistic. This will increase uh, the scale uh, where the BSP geometry has to cover it. Uh, but uh, again, you'll have to go off of each and every single door uh, depending on which door you use. 
Same goes for windows. There are various window sizes and this will also depend on the type of environment you're creating. So the door sizes and the window sizes have to be played around and uh, this will all depend on the doors and the windows that you use. Now I want to cover a very important aspect when you're blocking in your entire environment is how to keep your map to proportion at proper scale. So everything that I've described uh, previously uh, should be used now. Uh, all the player height, the width, the average wall height, the stairs, all these will help you to create your environment that is more proportionate and feels real. So first, you want to make sure that you're always snapped on the grid. If you go up to map, make sure that this is checked. Also, you want to work on the grid that is either 8 units, 16 or 32. When you are creating your geometry, uh, the BSP brushes around it, the higher the value, uh, the better control you will have among your brushes and the scale of the map. If you go lower in grid value, uh, that should be used for detailing. I personally st stick to 16 and then go down lower when I need to uh, modify, uh, make sure that the walls fit doors or when I'm creating stairs. To change your grid setting, uh, you can use the bracket keys. You can see down here it's changing and the grid size is changing as well. By clicking the two bracket keys, I can go smaller grid size and larger grid size. A few other tips. Uh, when you create a new environment, it's super important to insert a player scale model right inside your map as fast as possible. This will keep uh, your scale and proportion in control when you are blacking in the walls, the stairs, and the size of each room. To do that, this is a simple entity, which is a player start. Uh, so by going under Entity Tool and Info Player Terrorist, or you can scroll down Info Player Counter Terrorist, and just insert one right inside your map, and this will help you to judge scale a lot better than by simply not having these characters inside the map. Next is using developer textures. Uh, developer textures are given to you in Source, uh, so when you are blocking the new map, uh, I suggest you begin to implement and texture your environment using nothing else but developer textures. Uh, when you are going through texturing your environment, that's when you focus on you know, making sure that everything is positioned and textured properly uh, according to the type of environment you're creating. But when you are first beginning to block in and get a sense of scale, proportion, and gameplay, uh, you need to start using developer textures. In specific, some of these scale references that will help you to keep your map to proportion. So if we go to Toggle Texture Application or Shift A, we can go to Browse and in the filter, if you type in Dev and scroll down, you can see there are a dozen or more uh, developer textures that you can begin to use. There's one set for crates, for screen, for desk, doors, stairs, rails, as well as walls, and there are a few other ones that you can use that are more plain without a template reference of character height. So all of these will help you to keep your map to scale and proper proportion. Another part is when you're using the developer textures, uh, you can begin to place a few props inside the scene. These are regular prop statics. And by placing a few of these inside the rooms and around the environment, this will help you to gauge scale and proportion a lot better as well. So here I placed a table, a chair, and a uh, TV stand. And these give me an idea of how large this room needs to be if I were to include these items. So with these tools and units that we went over, these will help you to make sure that when you are creating your map, that it's set to proper proportion, that it looks correct, and helping you to create a more realistic and better looking map.